the miners look, it's their time. I often like front upon them. They're over long periods of time. They, they get destroyed by gold, but now is their time. <laughs> Patrick, how are you? Hi, hi, Andy. I'm um, I'm doing good. Thank you so much for um, making the time for me today. Fun story, and you are way too humble to admit this, but the last time I shouldn't say the last time, the first time I had you on, you were saying how silver was looking great, looking about to break out. As soon as I dropped that interview, I was getting all these comments. Silver is breaking out. So timing was great. Um, all of your Twitter and X feed now, you've been monitoring very closely the technical setup of both gold and silver. So let's talk about that. Let's start actually with gold first and then we'll uh, pivot to silver. So what are your indicators telling you about gold? Okay. Well, I, it's like it all depends on the time frame, but gold on all time frames. It, it is bullish. So bullish is above inclining moving averages, no matter what the length of your moving average is. So I, I could show you guys a chart there. So yeah, let's go for, for gold guys, because there's a wide range of people, right? Listening to your channel. There's some, it's some are stackers that they buy no matter what the price is, but they're happy to know, like, you know, they're, that the price is going up for their entry point. Um, sometimes you have traders where when you show them a yearly chart, yeah, great, Patrick. It's break on the yearly chart, but when do I take profits, you know, in the shorter time frames? So right. this is this like the main questions we get. So look, here's the gold chart. I'll put on the yearly. I'll go down for you guys. So that's the yearly chart for gold above the 12 year moving average, above the 36 year moving average, above, above, above. So that thing is in a, it's in an uptrend. It broke out of a pull flag here, pull flag breakout last year. And now what it's doing, it's completing that measure move. Let me get a measuring tool for you guys. So it depends where you started, but here's a non greedy. So gold, gold, gold guys, you know, it, it's getting in, in that strike zone. So we like for, for our members on the website there, we. We warned them about them. You know, there's like, everybody wants to, to pinpoint exactly where the top is, but it's not, that's not the, like the top, the word top, again, you only know in hindsight, it was a top, What you can know before you get to a potential top is, are the characteristics of the price showcasing that there's a possibility that there's a correction or something that's going to happen, right? That's, am I stretched from the moving average? It's mathematical. Am I completing measured moves, right? The energy in. Consolidate, it's the energy out. Once you get reaching those targets, expecting to to really like keep going up and up and up, it's possible. But those are areas where you possibly could get corrections. Like here in the 2000s, that, that crazy run there, like, you know, the yearly chart just went up and up and up. So on the smaller time frames, there were huge corrections here. And I, I'm going to zoom in on the gold chart to show you that. But on the higher time frame, it was just nonstop there. What I could do is... I'll put it on the, uh, not the futures, so I get more data, okay. remove drawings. So you see all that energy here, all that energy going to that pull flag here from the 1970s. So here it was a consolidation area, energy in, huge correction, energy out, and that was pretty much the target here. Big picture, bullish. Now I could zoom in, you could look on the quarterly chart, uh, reset chart view, St still the same thing guys look, but you're getting stretched there on this time frame, even here, pull flag. Look at, I'll zoom in really close for you guys. Look there, 2750, 2800. Maybe sometimes you overshoot on the smart time frames, right? You get a wick, but by the end of the quarter, it was there. So on the yearly, it, it, it looks close to, uh, you know, to, uh, to stalling. On the quarterly also, uh, let's go on the monthly chart. Same deal with the monthly chart. This measure move here is still all the way there. You're very close to it. You can't. It's not that it can't, it can't keep going up, but look, I'll, I'll hear at the bottom pane, I have distance from moving average. So essentially that's my FOMO or profit taking guide of selling into strength. Or mm -hmm. right here, I'm just gonna, this is historical. So look, historically, even it's like a range. When gold is 
40% above its 36 month moving average, when it's 55% above its 36 moving average, it's an area where often you, you stall, you, you stop a little while, whether it corrects like a big correction here, here, I'm going to highlight for you guys. Here was a 2008 correction. You see here where we went 55%, then either get a big correction. Sometimes it's just a sideways correction, but look where we are now. We're here with the 2020 peak. When we hit that, gold went sideways uh, for two years, no, 23, for three years, let the, the three-year moving average catch up. Look, this is the fuel in the gas tank. Mm -hmm. There's, here's one shot. And if it really goes bonkers, then yes, it, it maybe have an outlier chance, but the low risk entry for gold was somewhere down here, right? So it's yeah. getting stretched again, guys, it's, it's getting stretched. I could go in all the way to the daily chart, reset chart view, and I could do the same exercise, remove drawings, same thing. Look at that here. Here's where we are now. So you see the bulk of the distance from moving average is within a range, but the, the further you're away from it, you see there's here, like there's a lot of touches, but here I'm farther away. So these are beginning to be outlier chances, right? It's from a probabilistic from each of those months or each of those days, how many times was I able to get back above this line? Over all the sample, not that much, right? Here you did it once, twice, here you stalled here, here you're above. Now we're, we're there. So even on the daily chart right now, we're, we're at a, a potential for a correction. And I'll show you even here a short, much shorter term uh, pull flag. Pull, explosion. Yep. And look at that. It's like, we're, we're, yep. we're, we're there. We're there. Yep. It, it's a, it's like, it's a question of probabilities, you know, it's not about, so that's why sometimes it, once you start looking at that, how you're stretched, then you're able to see, and I don't want to say catch those tops, but look, this, this is it. All important tops always start with a correction on the smart time frame. So if I'm on the daily chart and this does start to correct here. It shouldn't be bullish because the higher time frames are pushing upwards. But what if it starts failing and then starts cascading? And then in hindsight, we'll know that that was a top. But this is, this could be the top, but right now it looks like a, a just a correction to let the moving average catch up. I'm, I'm too stretched like from the 36 day moving average. It's like, it's begging for, for a correction. And as soon as the momentum breaks down, we're below that line, then that's the market confirming, okay, we're in a correction. All you have to do now, short-term traders, all you have to do in wait, though eventually there'll be a pattern like this that's going to morph into existence, some type of, uh, some type of flag. And once it breaks out, once it's above that breakout line, then you have another new low risk entry point, right? Like this here, this one was yeah. tight. It's, it's rinse and repeat. So that's, uh, I hope this gives uh, some value there to your viewers. Gold starting to get stretched. Is it begging for a correction consolidation? 100%. It could, um, it could start happening. And it's hard to say this stuff when everybody's going crazy because right. the price going up and people don't want to hear that. Right. I know when I do a, a chart, like I talk about this, I get less views, less likes, you know, people want to keep hearing the bullish bullish targets, but guys, it's the nature of the beast. If I'm talking about these crazy end game targets of whatever, $8,000 gold or in, like big targets. It's because the price on the short time frame went so bonkers, it got my attention. It's making those higher time frame charts look great, but you got to expect that there, these are cycles on the daily chart, right? You got to expect that there'll be some type of reset where the moving average catches up. And this is another tidbit. Corrections happen two, two ways or a combination. It's either price, price goes down and it corrects and lets the moving average catch up or time. If the price just goes sideways and the moving average catches up, or sometimes it's a combination of both, right? So the correction, now people are scared. Well, is it going to go low? Am I going to, is it, am I going to get stopped out? But sometimes it could just be just, you know, just a nice little grind sideways. And then after that, uh, you're off to the races. Yeah. Thank you actually for that. Um, I guess it's a, um, um, a different view and actually I, I do, I do. Yes, I do agree with that. If you would, it's one of the things you said, it's like, uh, on your Twitter feed, it's like, don't, I'm going to paraphrase, but it's not to chase. We're still early. So there's no reason to go chasing. If you would price, if you would, um, and that you're not too late, I guess is what you're, and now you're just really looking to, if you're bullish, you're looking for an entry point. 
You just don't really want to cheat that. Would I, would, did I paraphrase that correctly? Yes. So each of those elements are true depending on the time frame. So the bull run practically hasn't started. The bull era, the bull market has started for a while, but the bull era, you know, you have to outperform SPX. On the big time frame, it's like nobody's late because it barely has started. Now, right. if somebody wants to enter based on the higher time frame, he could enter now and say, well, I'm in now because it's just starting. But he, if he's entering now based on the larger time frame, but he over positions and he lever, levers up and his sell stop super close, well, there's a high likelihood right now that anybody entering today, like I showed you, mm -hmm. is begging for a correction, maybe on the daily chart, even maybe the weekly, we're running out of steam, even the monthly maybe is gonna need a more important correction. So you're entering on the shorter time frames close to a, a top or a potential you know, place where it's consolidate. But if you zoom out on our time frame, that means practically nothing. If your sell stop's super far away, uh, or you have no sell stop, you're a stacker, if you're looking at the big, big picture, like your investment um, vision is five years, eight years, it's like, it's, it's, there's, it's, it's nothing. Yeah. So you know, people got to decide before they enter the trade. Well, I enter now, but they have to accept that there could be a correction right now. It could start going down as of today. And, um, so use time frames. We do it all the time. There's called just multi time frame analysis. Understand where you are. Sometimes you want to time it perfect, and it does happen where the yearly defined breakout matches with a reset. You know, like if we would have talked about this chart on the daily chart um, maybe a week ago when it wasn't, it didn't do that, do that final move. Then people, oh, cool, the daily chart has has reset. Maybe the weekly chart also has reset, and I'm in a big picture where the party isn't having started, then you get a little bit better timing. You get in a, a few hundred dollars lower or you, or you have less chance of emotional erosion by, it's hard when somebody enters a trade and the price right away starts going down, ah, about the top. Well, you could avoid that sometimes if you wait for the, the daily cycles to reset a little bit and you have less chances of getting triggered out if you wait for that, you know, that correction to happen to let the moving average catch up. But it's, it's a choice people. Some people, what they could do is, uh, of course, not financial advice, Let's say they want to take a position. Well, they say, okay, I'll take half now just in case it, it rips higher. And I'll take the other half after this correction ends and it consolidates and goes back up. You know, you could do some strategies to layer in to, uh, you don't have to put everything right now because it's, it's tough after that. Imagine it starts correcting now and it goes down five, 6%. It's like, oh man, I could have gotten cheaper. I could have bought more ounces. You start second guessing yourself. So yeah. step number one, Understand your framework, understand your, your vision, your scope. And then after that, uh, you'll be able to live with decision, the decision that you respected your, your trading framework. Yeah, no, that's great advice. And also let me just emphasize, we, we don't, and you said this many times, we don't know the future for sure. All we can get is just a perspective, a certain perspective and just know your perspective. Also a correction doesn't mean it has to go down. It can just grind in sideways. It's yeah. And then, um, um, really just, uh, last is corrections are very healthy, very, very healthy in bull markets. So just remember that. <laughs> yeah. Well, the, the trader is the, the one who, who buy options or they're on time delay. They want it to rock it. They don't care about the damage that a meltup does because a parabolic meltup, it breaks the chart. It, it's fun. You ride it. But a, a true parabolic, uh, you know, uh, hockey curve on the log scale that goes up like the 1980s or 2011, it breaks the chart. It needs time to heal because once it goes up, all that euphoria then goes down, then it goes back up, creates a necro bubble, a higher, a lower high, creates a top pattern. It's damage. It's, it's like uranium did it a little while back. It, and then you need to heal from that. So the best is just to go up like the SPX. 3%, go down a quarter of a percent, go up 1%. Like you do some, just a, a slow grind up. That's emotionally not draining. It's, it's boring, but it, it creates a trend that's sustainable, right? Because if we go too high, too fast, remember silver squeeze? Too high, too fast, at resistance, stretch from moving averages. It was just a recipe for, uh, for the chart there to, uh, to correct longer than if we would have just went up at a slower pace. Got it. Speaking of silver, let's talk about silver. Um, you, you thought silver on your Twitter feed looked is looking really good. So let's look at a chart of the silver. Yes. Let's do it. XAG USD. You know me. So 
Silver yearly chart, move drawings, reset chart view. Goodness, it's like, oh, move cloud. It's looking pretty good, guys, because this is the silver. Look on, on the yearly chart, I put a line chart here. It's not, just, I don't care about $50. It's like it didn't stay there long, you know? If I put on the line chart, so that means on the yearly close basis, look where silver price is right now. It's above. It's never been that high. If it closes here, that's its yearly close highest ever. Like forget 50. Right now, this for me, the $28, $29 level is the most important. And in three, what, three months, we're going to get some type of a confirmation if, if silver is able to close above this. It's, we're, we're, we're there. So that for me, silver, which is very, uh, you know what I should show? I want to show my, um, where is my, here, this one here. I want to show this chart that I posted on Twitter today. This is why it's different this time for silver. It's not like it's different. The TA is different. It's the setup's different than in the 1980s. The 1980s, it had to move up 600%. It was so on this from moving average, super stretch. It went bonkers. Again, just like we said there, crazy euphoria breaks a chart. That melt up. And there was a melt up even lower, right? From 1970 all the way to 1974. 75 went crazy, sideways, then went up. That entire move, I think it was 1,500% or something like that. That created damage, so much damage that silver went sideways for, you know, 20 years after that. And then we had the 2001, the 2001 to 2011, 12 run. It, it moved up over 500%. Then that was a lot of energy, stretch from moving averages, outperforming SPX for too long, then capital rotation where it was time for SPX, you know, to, to get the upper hand. That created, a, a, it validated this resistance right here. All this congestion area, $28, $29 on a yearly basis. That was it. But look at the difference now. Now the price went down. Not that down, it went down all the way, then go all the way back down. So it only needed 100% to get back here. So from the bottom here, all the way to 220, it only took 100%. So distance from moving average was stretched, but way, not as stretched as it was in the 70s, not as stretched as it was in the 2000s, much less stretched. And that's why people love cup and handles, whatever you want to call this. It's a higher low. Higher low means you're closer to your breakout line than you were before. And not only that, it just required a little bit, much less energy than before. So that energy is still, you know, bottling up. For four years, we've been hogging that line. Four years. Mm -hmm. Silver has closed, you know, 25 here uh, at uh, 28, 25, 24. Coiled and tight. And that time created this bigger base now. So we have a four-year base here. If you include the 2011, we have a 11, 12, 13-year base. And if you include the whole pattern... That's one like one crazy once in a lifetime type of chart pattern that, you know, if we see this break out there, it's like, that's the only time we're never like, I don't know, we're not going to see these 40, 50 year chart patterns break out like every day, right? You need that, you need that much month, right. amount of time. So that is super meaningful. And look, pull flag. Remember I showed you those pull flags there. Once they get close to their targets, they start, you know, uh, begging for a correction, but this is just the initial first candle out of that pole flag. So we had the bottom here, all the way here, for your pole, pole for your flag. This is, this would be, nobody's late because this could only get confirmed on December 31st. That's insane. So I'm not saying traders can't go in now. There's breakouts, you know, on the monthly chart. Like There's a whole bunch of breakouts happening for silver, but this is once in a lifetime, big picture stuff. If ever silver is able to close solidly above that 20, 27, 28 line, but even more, if it's able to close above 31 convincingly, let's say closes the year, I don't know, at 32 and a half, 33. That is insane. It enacts the targets of that pull, that pull target. So that can bring us maybe to 40, 50. And then after that, once it consolidates a little bit, then we'll be getting the bigger targets, right? Then it'll be this flag here, right? Uh, pull, flag, then add it on top. Then, then you start talking about these crazy targets, you know, the triple, triple digit silver. And again, just to mitigate people's expectations, that is a yearly chart. Silver is stretched on the daily chart for sure, begging for correction. 
It's getting stretched on the weekly. There's not much room left on the monthly, but you need the smaller timeframes to be stretched for that yearly chart to look great, for that yearly chart to look like it's full, it's about to break out. It's So right now, maybe get a correction, a good correction before the year end. But the most important part was it would be probably to get the correction out of the way sooner than later. So we, we still have December, whatever the correction is happening now, we still have December to close up strong once again and get that yearly close above that line. Because if it doesn't happen this year and the, the, the sellers come in and bring it below whatever, $28, and we have a week on top, uh, that means we have to wait another year before we get right. that confirmed breakout. But we just have like smart timeframes, you don't have the breakout, but to get that paradigm shift historical breakout, we're going to have to wait another year, man. <laughs> it's like... It, Okay. Stuff, right? You're like, yeah. we're so close now. Yeah. The price is above, it's not below. So it's the burden right now is on the bears to bring that thing down. It's not on the bulls. The bulls brought it here. The bears now have to knock it down. So do we get that recession, that fear, that the GFC 2008 crash before the end of the year? If we don't, it's looking really good for, for, for silver, for gold. Uh, it's just looking awesome there. But it, yeah, so, you know. Those are the, like, we've covered everything. Like we have this, the big picture set up and hopefully your viewers start to grasp the shorter term setups. You know, it's like, it's like a sine wave yep. that oscillates slower on the bigger time frame, And you have time to do many, many, uh, you know, hard beats on the smart time frames. And as long as you understand that, then it, your capital, your emotional capital erosion, it's much less, right? You, you know what to expect. It's like a boxer who goes into sparring and he's never done it before he's going to go on an adrenaline rush use all his energy up and he won't be able like he won't even be able to, to no, land one punch he's going to fall yeah. but if you're used to it your mental's prepared and you've practiced a lot then when you go in the gym uh, in the sparring ring you're you're not going to drain your emotional capital right so you have to understand what's you have to know what to expect and once you do that eh, there's a pullback on the smart time frames i'm i'm good uh, i expected that after my entry, the price would go down 5%. I don't care. I, I, you know, I expected it. Yep. Excellent. Okay. If you could talk uh, just briefly about GDX and maybe GDXJ, just where are they on the charts? I was looking at them the other day, but before I say anything, I'd love to have your opinion. All right, let's do it. Let's pop up the chart. Always, always the chart you need there. Uh, JDX, well, look, I could put JDX, JDXJ. It's all the same. I'll show, I'll show you, it's uh, the capital flows and I'll show you another trick. Hello candles, get okay, reset chart view. Okay, so here's JDX. I'm going to overlay JDXJ. New price scale. I'll put it on the log. Look, it's, the, these charts are, well, yeah, JDXJ, yeah, they're, they're practically the same there, these charts. Yeah. And uh, I could overlay as a, which is one of my favorites because it has data going back all the way to the late sixties. Uh -huh. As a chart trader, you always want data. And here, here's the ASA chart. So here I have ASA. They're following, yeah. they're remarkably. Oh yeah. And this is the thing guys, it's so funny because I could overlay um, even SIL, SILJ. So I could take an index of a whole bunch of crappy miners. And once the capital flows go in, well, SILJ. It's weird. People say it's the juniors, but there's still some, like there's a, I think there's, yeah, I mass, it. there's big companies in there, but the right. capital flows going in that entire sector, it's carving out these charts. So whether you're in JDXJ or JDX or SIL, SILJ and, or ASA, it's like, it doesn't matter much. It doesn't matter the components, what miners yeah. are in there or not. The charts, it, where, if one goes up, they all go up. So is it the management? Is it because of the management that's good that these charts are going up or down? I would argue that it's more because it's when the cap, the money starts going into that. Yep. Yes, it goes in that sector. But I'll look at just the JDX there for, um, as it's gone. Okay, here. Man, yeah, JDX on its own chart. I'm going to use this line here. Looking pretty sweet. Actually had a breakout out of this pull flag. Here's a non-greedy... Uh, there's still some room to run there for, for JDX. Yeah. And I'll show you what the best macro driver I found for the miners. So this is the, probably the first flag. Probably have a small consolidation here. And then we're probably going to enact this bigger move here that's going to go on top over here. So that's probably 
step one is this move here. And then we're probably going to have a second step that brings it back to all time highs. So that for me would be my roadmap for JDX, JDXJ right now up. There's still some room. Correction. Mm -hmm. If that correction doesn't cascade into a depression or like something worse, then after that, then we're, we're going back to all time highs. I'll show you this chart. I'll show you this chart of, so of uh, the miners and jobless in uh, unemployment. If I could just scroll down, unemployment shouldn't be too far. Unemployment, unemployment. Man, I do, I do so many charts, Andy. I have to stop. Maybe I should stop doing all this. Crazy. crazy. Okay, here, this one. All right. Bottom pane. This one here, I don't know what color, pink or purple. I'm colorblind. So what color do you see on this one there? Pink, pinkish for, reddish. Yeah. Okay. So tough for me. So pinkish red is the as a chart, the one we just covered, right? On top is unemployment, US unemployment rate. And here is the seven year rate of change for unemployment. The, how fast it explodes and comes back down. Look at the as a chart. The miners love it. It's kind of sad, but the miners love it when unemployment rate starts creeping up. And that's what's been happening. Interesting. Unemployment here goes up, uh, miners go up. Unemployment starts going up and the uh, miners go up. Pretty much even here, see, look, it went up. Here in the 70s went up. And look, it tracks, not always perfectly, but the, it, there's some correlation there. I'm not saying it's a cause, but there's correlation here. You could fit in the story. Like sometimes I heard this guy say, uh, uh, oh yeah, of course, uh, the miner is going to go up because if unemployment is going up, uh, we could be in disinflation. So energy costs are going down. So the miners, their, their profits going to look better, right? Because they're energy intensive. Like you could fit in any type of story behind it to, to, to make it make sense. And there's some, of course, like, you know, I, it appeals to me that, 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 that narrative, but un rising unemployment, the miners love it. It's kind of like, so yeah. it's an in that's why you got to be bullish because the setup here, the unemployment is not high and winding down. It's curving up. And every single time it's curved up this much, it's always practically doubled the unemployment there. I haven't seen anywhere. I did another chart. I haven't seen anywhere else where after unemployment goes up at this angle for this much off a of bottom that it just stopped there and turned back down. There's always like, you know, I'm expecting uh, at least the unemployment to double from here. And the miners love that. Initially, they, they just love it. If there's too much, like a 2008 crisis, it gets dragged down. So this is, when you add that on top, just the miners chart, it looks bullish. It's breaking out. Then you said the unemployment. So from a macroeconomic perspective, it's that also supporting right. the, the miners love it historically going up. So the miners often generally just, just terrible, but if there was a time for them to be, to do good, it's right now. <laughs> right. I mean, this, this is their time right now. I over long, even over long bull runs, the metal, once they do their initial moves and not perform the metals, the metals usually do much better than, than the miners. It's like, right. unless you, you choose then the, in the, the indices of the miners, you of course could choose like some high quality miners, great looking charts that will be better than the index of them. But the index does good at the beginning. And then after that gold, uh, you know, the gold, silver, they, they're just, they're better over the, the entire entirety of the bull run. But yeah, the miners look, it's their time. I often like front upon them. They're over long periods of time. They, they get destroyed by gold, but now is their time. <laughs> wow. If that you know, shots that's, now. It's great, great charts and great, great insight. Patrick, I know you're busy. Um, I'm going to let you go. Um, if people want to do business with you or do, want your product, and I'm, I've am i become a huge fan over the six months uh, I've gotten to know you, uh, how, do they, uh, how do they find you and uh, how do they reach out to you? Yes. Well, guys, uh, Bat Charts One on Twitter, get all that, that stuff. But uh, seriously, if you want the, like, you know, the nuanced analysis and the, to communicate with us, you know, uh, through a... Uh, our, our website, northstarbatcharts.com, guys, that's the place to be. So come and see us uh, at the website or else uh, just uh, join up and uh, subscribe to uh, follow us on Twitter. And uh, that's also good, guys. Yeah. No, and again, I Patrick is uh, paying me nothing for this. Uh, this is just me believing in uh, Patrick and the product. Great, great stuff. Thank you, Patrick. Uh, and thank you so much for your kindness and 
coming in on the fly why stuff was uh, really moving and breaking out. Yes, it's my pleasure, Andy. Hopefully it gives their value there to all your viewers. Absolutely. Take care. All right.